Hello world, my name is Tim Rosswick. I'm the developer of a game called Battle Barn Tactics, which you can wishlist down below. Today, we're talking about designing for player behavior versus designing around player behavior, what that means, and how you can use it to improve your games. Uh, let me go ahead and define those terms for you real quick before we dive into the, the pros and cons of each method and kind of where it is. So designing for player behavior means that you are adding systems into the game to elicit a very specific behavior out of the player i posted a video a while back about how if you give a player a gun they want to shoot shit that's a perfect example you give them a gun you're trying to uh make them behave in a certain way of shooting something uh and blowing it up or whatever it is right you give them red barrels and a gun you you want them to shoot the red barrels and blow up shit um designing around player behavior means that you given a certain system given a set of systems in your game when people sit down to play a game uh there's certain behavior that they exhibit uh in general now everybody's different so everybody comes at it from a different perspective but a lot of times you'll see uh emergent behavior you'll see pattern behavior uh emerging from your set of systems and sometimes it's better to make things work like people think they should instead of how you think they should so that's kind of the difference between the two. Let's talk about the pros and cons of each. Um, just to be clear, though, I do think a great design um, philosophy is a good mix of both of these. I don't think that one is better than the other. I don't think that... Uh, I, I really don't even think you can make a really good game without using some level of both because uh, it's just... I don't know. I mean, maybe some pro designer that's not me can come up with something like that, but I can't. Uh, so designing for player behavior, I think, is where you should start because um, everybody's got an idea for a game, right? Everybody's got this idea of like, hey, I want to make this thing. And wouldn't it be cool if, right, that that underscore line of like, wouldn't it be cool if this happened and then you could like fly in and like shoot people and like things blow up and aliens come and, and all this stuff, right? And so you have to start with something right you can't you can't follow players behavior uh without having something and if you if you look into the story of like the old like daisy and PUBG and how those games started like a lot of them started as mods and they were mods of games where they kind of created themselves out of uh this player behavior this desire or daisy specifically uh took took some of the most um the the player interactions that were like the most interesting to the developer and put them in a game PUBG same thing but they went like a different route right like uh it's it's a similar sort of game but they took the different incentives uh to kind of incentivize certain player behavior so um the way that those games work are similar but they're also very different because of the systems that incentivize different things so uh you can start with um designing around player behavior but but you'd have to have something to test right so generally you want to start with uh designing for player behavior and i think any seasoned designer that's made a few games that understands design somewhat understands the concepts of design and all that stuff i think they have a better grasp of what it means to design for player behavior they understand that like hey if i if i give you money while you kill animals or while you kill uh, you're not animals i just happen to make a game about an animal fight club okay or you kill Pokemon or whatever it is, um, and then you can spend that money at the shop, they understand that that's economy design, that by directly incentivizing you to do a certain thing by getting a reward, then you are more likely to go do that thing, right? Um, so you, you, there are definitely things you could put in your game specifically to elicit certain behaviors. But a lot of times newer designers, they, they're not really thinking that way, and I definitely wasn't uh, for a long time. Like, I've made 30-some games now, and uh, I would probably say I really put that thought into like three of them, uh, my current game included. So like not that many, but like the more games you make, the more you start to realize that, hey, you add this thing in the game and suddenly players act different. So it's important to pay attention to like what those incentives are, what you're incentivizing with your systems, how you're incentivizing it, right? Um, but then there's the other end. And the other end is actually something that as an intuitive designer, as someone that I don't really do spreadsheets, I don't really do design docs, but I kind of like make stuff and then, oh, that was cool, oh, that felt cool, it would feel cooler if, like that's kind of how I design games, right? Um, I really enjoy watching people experience my thing. 
but I really enjoy the the figuring out part of psychology, right? So like I drop a, another human into my system, right? My game, my ecosystem, whatever it is, and I watch how they react. And I, I, I find it fascinating how they they interact with certain things and they think certain things should do this and certain things should do that. Um, and I like to kind of watch that, think about what their expectations are of a given scenario, and then try and mold my scenarios to uh, match that expectation. So this a perfect example of this was a, a game called Cyberpunk, which I never finished, uh, but that game went through a lot of evolution. And one of the things that um, players would do, so, so we had a grid, and then on the grid there are these little microchips, because the idea is that you're in a computer hacking the system. Uh, and immediately, I built this whole map gen system, I built all this stuff, that like set up these blocks everywhere to kind of guide you where you needed to go right and then it was a stealth hacking roguelike uh but immediately everybody went to the blocks and they just tried to destroy them so like when they had a laser uh which i took the laser away uh and no matter what i did like these players would just walk up to this block and be like how do i destroy the blocks like that was a thing how do i how do i do that so i was like like they're they're not playing the game right man they're not playing it right what are they doing what's wrong with them they're not playing my game right but then I was like, okay, well, what if, since everybody thinks they can break the blocks, what if I just allow them to break the blocks, right? Uh, so that's what we did. And then suddenly we had uh, everybody going to break the blocks. And I was like, oh, well, what if we add stuff in the blocks, right? So then now we can go from like not having that behavior to having that behavior to incentivizing that behavior. So then I put some rewards in there. And then we had people that would... Uh, <laughs> like just literally break all of the blocks and they would that would be what they would do they would just go in a level and break all the blocks and it was like that's kind of boring and so i kind of tailored back the incentive a little bit but we ended up with this happy medium where like okay there was you could find stuff in the blocks every once in a while but there were special blocks that you had to find but the but that also had the added benefit of of loosening up my map gen algorithm but because before i always had to do this really hardcore thing where i had to make a path between the player and the exit point i always make sure it wasn't blocked and it was just really complicated but the fact that they could destroy the blocks and move the blocks around made it to where i didn't really have to do all that math so the, the levels could be really a lot more interesting um and it actually improved the game quite a bit so by following players behavior right designing around player behavior um, I made something a little more interesting and it doesn't always work out like that, right? Like it's it's perfectly capable uh, Or you're perfectly capable of like creating something that's bad just based on some bad feedback that you got uh, but Generally the earlier in a game I'm designing I try and design for player behavior as I'm building all the systems But then the later in the game it kind of gets in the prototype phase I wouldn't say like later in like the production phase but later in like the let's come up with the ideas and figure out what this game is phase for me. I don't know if everybody has those phases, but I do. Um, and then I hit a certain point where I'm like, okay, now I'm in production. I got to make this game. And that's where I'm at with Battle Barn Tactics right now is like I figured out what the game is. I just have to make more of it. Um, but in the figuring out what the game is phase, uh, there's a lot of a lot of me watching vi feedback videos. I always tell my testers the best way you can give me feedback is to record yourself playing with commentary like do a let's play basically excuse me of the game and that's like the best way because then i can learn like what you're thinking and what you thought things did and i'm learning there's a lot of stuff that comes up that doesn't that i never would have thought of that that seems so obvious in retrospect but like it it didn't it, a perfect example too would be my my game battle Bar tactics uh, there's a there's a boss called the stank tank which is in the poop troop section and he has poop mortars that shoot up in the sky and fall down. And uh, I, I, when I was designing the boss, I was like, okay, well, if the mortar falls on a unit, I don't want to spawn the poop because the poop does this thing where, like, if you guys should, I never thought I would make these sentences, but I'm making sentences about poop. Okay, uh, if you want to see more about this, you can check one of the other uh, Battle Bar Tactics videos that'll kind of show all this stuff off. Uh, but basically, the um, when when the mortar falls on a blank square it spawns a poop and then if you step in the poop you get stanky and all this other stuff you get the status effect you get you get all this but if it spawned if it landed on an object like a tree or something i was like no it shouldn't spawn the object because it shouldn't spawn the poop on top of the object so i just i 
I sh I sent out the build that way just because I was like, that doesn't that doesn't make like I didn't want it to spawn on top of the object, right? But then someone was like, well, everywhere else in the game, when you when you touch poop, you get stanky, and then stanky has a status effect, and some characters get benefits from that status effect, right? So they were really confused when the poop mortar landed on their head, and then they didn't get the status effect, and I was like. Ah, because that's like their expectation, right? So that's kind of a mix of both where it's like I I designed for that player behavior of like incentivizing them to like get the status effect by keeping their enemies keeping their units stanky to get like the bonuses, right? But then I changed up the behavior last minute and like following their expectations makes way more sense than my programmer brain did in that moment so like now what it does is it like just gives you the status effect if it lands on you even though it doesn't spawn and then if it happens to destroy the object it'll also spawn the the thing so um there are there are scenarios where like you can definitely tell there's a disconnect between what players think and what the system does and sometimes you're right as a designer sometimes you could be like hey uh you know you didn't understand this thing but that's like my fault you didn't understand it rather than like it's bad Right. But then sometimes it's like, no, they understand that thing a certain way because it's that it's how it should be. It's how they think it should be is how it should be. Like, that's the best ideal form. Right. Like whatever is the simplest to learn is usually probably one of the best solutions that you can have, because like that's the stuff that just logically makes sense. Like I have um, in the latest build, I have uh, um, like a street um, kind of like uh urban landscape and there's fire hydrants in, in one of the levels and it's like well what happens when you break a fire hydrant what do you assume is going to happen it's probably it's going to spawn water right and there's water in other parts of the game and even though it, water didn't really make sense logically in the whole ecosystem of this i was like okay well it should just spawn water because that's what players think it should do right um so there's a lot of stuff like that and i think like i said later on you get in development the more the more you can kind of adapt to player behavior and not everybody's an intuitive designer. So not everybody likes to kind of follow that rabbit hole of like what pe people think and, and how they think it should be. I happen to really enjoy that. But like I said, I think the best games use a combination of both of these methods, right? Like the, the more you learn as a designer, the more you learn that what you're implementing always has an incentive and a disincentive, right? Like anything you add to the game is going to affect player behavior and you have to be cognizant of, the things that you add because they change the way that people interact with the system but at the same time sometimes those systems have effects either together or by themselves that you wouldn't realize and it's almost always a better idea in my opinion to change those systems to adapt the way that people intuitively feel that they should work rather than try and like say you're playing the game wrong you're playing it wrong which some people do uh myself included i used to do that too but that's all i got for you just that quick tidbit um i want to say thank you to these people right here they help me keep doing what i'm doing uh they're pretty awesome if you want your name on this list you can head over patreon.com slash game to underground there's tools and stuff there to help you build finish and launch better games um if you want to join a community of game devs from all across the globe where we hang out and we talk about cool stuff like game dev uh, you can head over to our Discord link, which is down below. Uh, but either way, I'll see you later. Go make some games. Talk to you later.